Hey girl, so uh, you're wondering about summer school, how it could help you finish your degree faster, and um, but you're having some concerns about the time and the money and the stress that could be involved, and is it really worth it? So my summer school experience actually turned out great, and I have a t- few tips and tricks to help you pay for and survive it as a broke college student. A few things such as one of my classes... I actually got extra credit for doing homework, and I also had enough to pay for summer school exactly down to $2. Like, I had $2 extra that I didn't use. Um, I know, super random. And I had some great professors and chose some of, like, the easier options and classes that I knew I could handle within the time frame. So let's talk about that. Hey girl, welcome to Money and Mental Peace, a podcast for Christian college girls wanting to graduate debt-free. Do you procrastinate on homework while Googling easy scholarships and money for college because you're drowning in debt and student loans? Afraid you'll never have enough time and motivation to find ways to pay for college when you don't even have enough time to sleep or have a social life? I'm Kara. I too was a stressed college student and overachiever looking for money and mental peace. I wondered if there were other ways to pay for college, and I wished for a clear direction on how to do it. I wanted an easier way to fund college with less anxiety, but I kept telling myself I had no idea what to do, thought I wasn't finished in school fast enough, and thought I would never have enough money. Until some scholarships and real rare school hacks got me through debt free and I can show you how to do this as well. In this podcast you'll find mental peace, answers for your future and enough money to kill it at college. So grab your cold brew and TI-89 and enroll in the most stress free and debt free class that you've ever attended. This is money and mental peace. Hey, I'm back. Okay, real quick point. If you want to have like continuous ideas of ways to graduate debt-free like I did as well as handling your mental health and just um, following God to what he would guide for your life for answers on what to study where to go your future all of the good stuff I am over on Facebook in our Facebook community entitled Christian College Girl Community dash scholarships and graduate debt-free so that's the whole title the dash just indicates some more information of what it's about but again it's called christian college girl community and the link is in the show notes so i would love if you guys would come and join me there so quick story because it's a great way to start a podcast regarding um summer school so i was trying to figure out what to do um I I had my major and minor plans laid out in the university plan. You'll know that um, if you go back a few episodes ago when I talk about deciding a major and deciding on a university. But how to pay for it all, <laughs> plus summer school, because I had decided to do some summer school to bump up like the speed with which I was getting stuff done, and I also had some funds for it. So the amazing thing is my choir scholarship at my community college not only covered full tuition during the school year, and I have some um, episodes about that way early on, like somewhere in the single-digit episodes. Go check it out. Um, But they also covered both summer semesters, not just fall and winter. Um, They call them two summer semesters. We had fall, winter, and two summer. I know it's sometimes weird. Some people have spring and then summer, whatever they called it. Um, But There was such confusion for a while on whether it would be for just one summer semester or both of them, Um, but, you know, finally got it squared away through bugging enough people and phone calls and emails, and it cost $1,300 for both. Now, let me remind you, like, that would be great price now for some classes, but um, this is at a community college, so it was cheaper than probably the school you're at. But get this, my tuition and fees ended up being $1,298 for three summer classes. And I had $1,300 to cover it. Like literally, praise God. Basically, I had $2 to spare from my scholarships 
but oh well, like I just didn't get two bucks. It was so much cheaper to finish these few more classes in the summer at my community college than to wait and take them at the university. So yeah, um, summer classes are usually shorter. So ours, we had the two summer semester and they're six week classes. Some out there are like eight week classes. So you'd have to take into account how much time you have for each thing, right? Um, I was going to take calculus three because I needed that for my math minor. Um, but that would have been crazy in six weeks. And I'm glad I didn't. Let's just say that. Turns out I took Calc 3 later in the year with a super fun group of other people. So it was good I didn't do it then. But instead, for this first summer semester, I took statistics and anthropology. Literally, thank goodness, because st like stats can be a difficult class, but it was only the introduction to statistics and definitely easier than the recent calculus classes I'd been taking. So Plus, I was friends with like three other people in the class, right? So that helps. And get this, the homework in statistics was extra credit. Like what? Um, <laughs> that was just in the syllabus. They, it literally was like the majority or all of the grade was just on the tests, which is a lot of what a lot of college classes have um, or sometimes projects. But there weren't any projects in here. But for like incentive to do the homework, it was extra credit. So I appreciated that. Um, I found that out actually by checking ahead of time. I took that class knowing that because I had asked some other students, had gone on like ratemyprofessor.com, all the, you know, all the good stuff. Now anthropology was awesome because I just got to sit and listen to interesting lectures. It's like a fascinating subject. It's just different, you know, humanity, people, groups. Like I just felt like I was learning cool, unique stuff around the world type of thing, and there wasn't too much homework. So a word of advice. Here is your very first tip and hack um, for summer school. The first one is to research ahead. Like, literally, I did these classes because I knew what I was getting into, and also compared to, like, calculus, right? So Ask students who have already taken the classes you're looking into, especially for the short summer classes. Check the website, ratemyprofessor.com, and choose wisely. Have you guys heard of that website? So different students from, you know, all over. I don't know if it's internationally or just in the U.S., but um, can mark down, like, ratings like positives and negatives for different professors for different classes they took and you can kind of get a heads up on what the professor will be like also take it with a grain of salt I've had some professors on there who got terrible ratings but I had them maybe at a different school or like I just was a good student so like I could handle them and it was fine other people have had good reviews and they don't have the best experience but you can use some of those to get started on your research. Sometimes it has been really helpful. Um, also, secondly, for summer classes, if you can plan ahead, it would be awesome for you to plan summer classes as like fun or like the extracurricular, not extracurricular, um, the electives that you need to take that aren't as specific, classes that are more interesting, um, maybe challenging in that way, but not like unnecessarily hard or just downright easy classes and if possible try to fit your work around good classes like this instead of fitting your classes around work I know that's not always possible but that's my next second tip fitting good classes fitting work around good classes because with summer school and the speed and also that you might want to be outside more and not studying it all the time you just don't want to kill yourself over this sometimes you know you can't be flexible with work, I understand. But for those of you who can, I would suggest getting, focusing more on having the good classes that are interesting or easier or at least doable in the time frame compared to having the best shifts at work if you can change your shifts. Um, so that's the second suggestion. Okay, let's move on. So I actually started teaching before I was done with the story. There's a little bit more. Um, my last summer class. So remember I mentioned we have two summer semesters. It's just how our school was. Yours might be different. Um, the last one I took was macroeconomics online. And 
it was much better to take this by itself, like literally because it was more difficult, had more time intensive than the previous two. But watch out for a future episode where I talk more specifically about this class because since it was by itself, (laughs) I took the class. I took a 14-week class normally if it was in the full semester and I did it in three weeks. What? (laughs) I finished a 14-week class in three weeks. Now, again, summer school generally was six weeks. So, I mean, I already it was already being sh- smushed, you know, smaller. Um, but I'm saying it was 14 weeks if it would have been in a normal semester time, and I did it in three. So, um, just hang hang in there for me to give some advice on how I did that. But that is not as much the priority of this conversation because that is more about how to do a class fast and not exactly how I was paying for um, summer school. Anyways, so I was finished with summer school, and let's go through a few more tips. One of the things, um, well, I already talked with you guys about how to decide what you were going to do and like research and stuff, but you're probably like, Kara, (laughs) the title talked about paying for it as a broke college student. Yes, yes, I did. So I'm going to go to tip number three which is how to pay for summer school. So I have done quite a few episodes in the past. Let me name a few that have talked about um, finding and applying for scholarships. So you can go back to some of these, such as episode 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Apparently I did it in a row. So there you go. (laughs) The early teens, right? Um, Also, if you want to know how I got this full ride choir scholarship, which covered some of this stuff, that is episode three. It was five easy steps or five steps to getting an easy full ride scholarship or let me do it for you. So the or let me do it for you part is what we're going to talk about today. So you want to pay for college. You want to pay for this summer school. There are definitely ways um, through, you know, working and you know online um not online getting a job on campus and oh let's see maybe some grants you might have if that's within your um, income range at in your state but scholarships scholarships are a great way to pay for college and did you know that you usually have to apply for financial aid for the summer so It depends on the school, but when I transferred to my university and I went to Eastern uh, later on, I I couldn't just see, oh, I have money left over for summer school. I actually had to do like an application for financial aid in summer school. Now, of course, they offered me like loans right away. I didn't want to do that. Um, And that's a separate place because um, I just did like, I think, one online class or something then. We're not talking about that. But I actually had to go and check into it. So it's currently March right now, um, and this is when you need to be looking into this stuff if you're planning ahead for, you know, another semester, summer, semester time. So you need to actually check with your financial aid if you need to apply for summer school financial aid of any sort and see if you get some scholarships covering you. If you already have scholarships, they might literally just be continuing through the summer. So that's a step to do. Um, That step three is already looking at financial aid. And step four would be the last point that you could hire me to do it, honestly. I have a business where I help students find scholarships for college. I cannot apply for them for you because that would be illegal. (laughs) Um, But I can talk with you about your information, your plans for college and career, and I can go and look for them and present them to you so it cuts out all the hours or days or weeks that you'd spend looking for scholarships and I can help present them to you um, and then you just go ahead and apply for them for the summer and beyond. So let's um, recap. So I had mentioned that you can research ahead to look into what classes you can take like on ratemyprofessor.com. Again, I'll say that slower. Rate my professor.com and talk to other students you might be able to tell if you know 
it's an easier class or interesting and such. Number two is fitting work around your classes and not classes around your work, if possible. I know work can come and go and change the flexibility, but that way you can try to get the easier or more interesting or more elective type not as intensive classes for the summer because it's such it's sped up right um, number three is checking into your financial aid sometimes you have to like actually ask about summer financial aid and not just assume they'll let you know it depends on the school but sometimes if you have scholarships some of it might be continued over to the summer so ask about that and fourth you can look for scholarships yourself now, some of those I mentioned earlier, those episodes like 11 through 15, when I mentioned different scholarships you could apply for, honestly, you could just go listen to those or go to those websites I suggest on there. But if you don't want to take the time to do all the research yourself, then you could totally hire me to do that. If you are interested in hiring me, please send me an email at info at moneyandmentalpeace.com. Again, that is info at moneyandmentalpeace.com and I can guarantee finding you between $10,000 and $30,000 in scholarship opportunities. Yes, I did say that much. That's five figures of opportunities. Again, you'd have to do the applying because that would be legal for me to do. But I can guarantee finding you that much that you're potentially eligible for that you can try to apply for. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again in a couple days, and hopefully these are some good tips that can help you pay for and survive summer school as a broke college student. Thanks, guys. Bye. Hey, girl. Okay, so before you run off to calculus, if this podcast has brought you any encouragement, would you please write a review on iTunes or take a screenshot, post it in your Insta stories, and tag me. Let's tell the rest of our stressed sisters that more money and peace can be attained outside of the conventional way of doing college. See you next time. Love and prayers, Kara.